All right. While y'all keep putting your information in the chat, we're going to go ahead and get started. The ambassadors are going to introduce themselves, and you can all get to know us a bit better, our name, major, hometown, and some things we're involved in. So I'll go first. My name is Sydney. I'm from LA, studying communication and political science. Something I'm involved in, other than being an ambassador, um, I had an on-campus job with Kids on Campus, which is a daycare for professors' kids. Um, likewise, I'm in the Student Alumni Council, which plans events to Santa Clara students, um, as well as connect them with alumni. Likewise, um, I was an orientation leader. I'm in the Communication and Political Science Honor Society, respectfully or effectively, and um, I have an internship outside of school as a research assistant. So Caroline, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, guys. I'm Caroline. I'm from Chicago, and I'm a senior studying communication with a minor in Italian studies. Um, I'm also a transfer student. Um, a couple of things I'm involved in. I'm the president of Santa Clara's Mindfulness Club. So we do a lot of like yoga, meditation. We'll go on hikes together, things like that. And then I'm also, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a horrible cold right now. Um, I'm also an editor on the SU Collective, which is a digital magazine kind of centered around like lifestyle, fashion, and photography. Um, and then I'm also part of Alpha Sigma Nu, which is our Jesuit Honor Society. And I studied abroad this past year in Rome, Italy. And then hi everybody, my name is also Sydney. Um, I'm also from Chicago um, and I'm a junior double majoring in theater and child studies. And outside of being an ambassador for the university, I am involved in our acapella uh, group on campus. I'm in one of our five acapella groups. Um, I'm also involved in the theater department. I've performed in shows, I've worked behind the scenes on shows. So anything about the arts at Santa Clara, I can probably answer questions about. Um, I'm involved in off-campus Greek life. Um, I've served as a peer educator for several classes, um, which a couple of us will get into as we go into what we do during the day, but it's basically Santa Clara's version of a TA. Um, I'm also part of the Jesuit Honor Society. I was supposed to go on an immersion trip to the Arizona-Mexico border last spring break, um, which got canceled two days before, before we were supposed to leave due to COVID, but um, did all the prep work and everything for it. So if you're wondering about any of that, I'd love to answer those questions for you. All right, sweet. If y'all are comfortable or able to turn your cameras on, that'll be dope so you can sort of, you know, simulate human interaction. But if not, I understand. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can start with the presentation. So we're going to show a presentation, kind of getting into what we do on a regular basis. Afterwards, we're going to have a Q&A. So feel free to ask questions in the chat, anything you think of as we go or afterwards. So again, welcome to the Day in the Life event. You're going to learn about our extracurricular activities, classes, hobbies, and more. So the agenda for this presentation, we're going to start with campus clubs, what campus clubs are available, how to sign up. Then we're gonna talk about campus job opportunities, how to find them and their benefits. We're gonna get into campus sports, the different levels and how you can join. Then we're gonna talk about some off-campus activities, some fun things you can do with your friends around campus. And lastly, end with a day in our lives and how our classes, hobbies, extracurriculars, interests align with our Santa Clara experience. So first we're gonna talk about clubs. Do the quote from the Center of Student Involvement, the Center of Student Involvement provides students with a variety of ways to explore leadership opportunities, try new experiences, continue pursuing current interests, gain valuable skills, learn more about themselves, and meet others. So Center for Student Involvement is kind of where our clubs reside and that kind of thing. There's over 150 different campus clubs you can get involved in, ranging from physical clubs like um, Charge, which is a women's running club, and then there's mindfulness clubs like meditation, there's service clubs like SCAP, Santa Clara Community Action Program. There's multicultural clubs as well, as we're gonna get into in a moment. So yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. There's a lot of different types of clubs, artistic and creative ones like acapella, hypnotic and Bronco Film Society. Like I was saying, multicultural ones, um, which are for students of color. Ranging from things like Igwe, our Black Student Union, APSU for Pacific Islander students, TLC, um, together for Ladies of Color, NCSA, our Chinese Student Association, and many others as well. There's also major specific clubs, so like SU Microfinance, Engineers Without Borders, um, Society for Women Engineers, and more. And then like I said, there's social justice and community action clubs like SCAP and the Forge Garden. Also, if you want to start your own club, it's a very simple and easy process. You do it online. 
fill out some forms. So if there is not the club you want and the 150 offered, you can always create your own. As far as how to get involved in these clubs, there's an annual club fair at the beginning of fall quarter. Um, so you would go to that. Obviously now we haven't done that, but in the past, that was how you would get involved. You can sign up for as many as you want and then get as involved as you see fit. You can also look online and so do some research and reach out to the club leaders if you'd like to join. Yeah, so now we're gonna get into some job opportunities on campus. Um, there's lots to get involved in, but the kind of student employment quote um, is that the campus department centers and offices offer um, a wide variety of jobs for students. And so they can vary from daytime to evening. Some jobs are on the weekends and um, many jobs are like labor intensive and others can be like totally less so. Um, so definitely all different types of jobs. Um, a couple of categories here. So there's student assistance, um, which can kind of help in, you know, offices. I've had friends that kind of worked at like the front desk in the Spanish department or um, kind of helped teachers with stuff outside of the classroom. Um, there's researchers. So if you want to do research with your professor, it's definitely a doable thing. A lot of our professors are really open to doing that with students. If they're working on something and you express kind of interest in what they're researching, um, they will often hire our students to help them with that. Um, one of my housemates actually did um, some research with her anthropology professor and they got to go down to Santa Cruz and do cool stuff like that. Um, we also have orientation leaders that get paid. So when you come here your first year, we have an awesome orientation program for first year students. Um, and it's led by orientation leaders that are primarily sophomores. And so they do a great job and they spend a lot of time doing it. So they get paid for it. Um, community facilitators are Santa Clara's version of um, like residential life people. So a lot of other colleges <clears throat> excuse me, call them RAs, but we call them community facilitators because they do a lot more than just kind of being an RA. They kind of host a lot of different events and they're also just kind of like the touch point of your residence hall if you have any problems and um, that kind of thing. And then teaching assistants, Sydney said this in her introduction, I am also um, a peer educator. So we call them peer educators at Santa Clara. Um, and they're kind of few and far between. Most of them you'll find um, are within the hard sciences, like when there's a lab and then within language courses as well. Um, and then kind of more classes that are like hands-on and need just more help. Um, one thing that Sydney and I both don't do is grade people's um, uh, assignments. So when you're a peer educator, you're kind of just there to help um, students. Um, and it's likely a class that you've taken before. So you know kind of the ins and outs, but um, you'll never be grading people's work. So that's also really nice because you know that your professor is the one doing that. Um, and then we have gym supervisors as well. So if you want to work at uh, Mali, which is our rec center, you can um, do a number of jobs there. Um, and so where can you find these on campus jobs? So we actually have um, a page on our website that is um, like solely for postings of campus jobs. So um, there's that posting site, which is pretty updated and, and they'll update that pretty often. Um, a lot of it too is through word of mouth. Like if you're kind of researching with a professor and your friend's like, oh, that's interesting too. Like you could find out that way, or maybe you even like pass it down to someone. So you are kind of like the assistant in someone's office and then you kind of refer another student. Um, and then just kind of asking directly as well. I mean, it goes a long way to kind of just express your interest in a job and say, oh, are you hiring or um, anything like that? So that is sort of how we find jobs. And as ambassadors, um, it is a little bit different. So we kind of had to apply and then go through a, a whole interview process. And so that was a little bit um, separate from kind of like the on-campus job um, sort of postings, but yeah. Um, and so some of the benefits of having an on-campus job, um, there are many, but um, just to kind of break it down for you, definitely experience. So you're going to gain a lot of work experience, something good to put on your resume, um, and just a lot of practical skills that you can take with you in the future, um, like communication and professionalism. And I think all of us could say as ambassadors, we definitely have um, made our public speaking skills better and can communicate really well. And um, definitely more professional when we're speaking to parents and things like that. So really get great skills. And I, I'm in the job search right now and do a lot. I talk a lot about what I've learned as, as an on-campus employee. Um, also time management. It's actually really interesting um, having an on-campus job, kind of balancing that with um, schoolwork and personal life. And I think it actually provides a, like a good balance just because um, when you're not doing 
like work for school, you can kind of blow off some steam on your on-campus job and then go hang out with your friends after. And so kind of a good balance there, um, depending on what kind of job you have and how um, time consuming it may be. Um, and then also just connections. You get to meet a lot of other really cool students that are student, like student employees. Um, and then a lot of awesome professors and employers on campus um, and just kind of get you connections for the future. Like maybe a professor you're doing research with will reach out to you with a job opportunity that they know about or will extend research to you for the next year. Um, and then the student ambassador network is awesome. We have alumni student ambassadors that always reach out to us with questions or kind of just updates or job opportunities and things like that. So yeah, highly recommend. All right, perfect, thank you. I'm gonna be talking about internships and how you can get them. So a little bit of background, about 80% of SU undergrads have had at least one internship during their time as students. Some of SCU's top employers are Google, Cisco, Lockheed Martin, and Apple. A huge part of that is proximity uh, as we're located in the Silicon Valley. It makes it really easy and convenient for us to have these people kind of in our backyard and therefore it makes it really easy to network when they come to career fairs and that kind of thing. Um, it makes it easier to do that. So how do students get internships? There are a lot of different ways, but these are the three main ones. So first, Handshake, that's an online platform that's used by SU students to connect with employers. I've applied to countless um, internships through Handshake. I personally think it's better than LinkedIn. Um, it feels more personal and more interesting than LinkedIn. Likewise, a career center. So right outside Benson, SU has its own career center with a full staff in which they do things like resume building, mock interviews to give you career advice and general advising. When I was a first year, I remember being very overwhelmed and stressed about internships and my major and all these kind of things. What is funny looking back because now I was like 18, like relax. But back then I was super nervous. And so I went to the career center just to get some like general advice on whether or not my major would provide the opportunities I actually wanted post-graduation. And it was really calming to get that like clarity right away. And so I'm really grateful for that resource. Lastly, networking. Networking is super important. I'm sure you've heard it at any um, college event. It's important to like, get your name out there, talk to people. A lot of networking comes from career fairs, professors, your friends, people in your major department, and even through email. And one of the good things about going to a medium to small size school is that networking becomes a lot easier. If your professor knows you by name and they know your personality and your interests, it's easier for them to um, offer you opportunities doing research with them or doing things with people that they know in the industry. So networking is very important and it's made a lot easier when you actually can forge connections with your professors and friends around you. So one of the biggest areas that students are involved in on campus are through our intramural and club sports. So we're going to get into a little bit about the three levels of sports we offer and then what you all can get involved in. So like I mentioned, there's three different levels of sports at Santa Clara. So you have your D1 sports. Um, at this point, you probably know if you're going to play a D1 sport, um, but you are playing for the university. You're considered a student athlete officially. You're recruited by the university. Um, they're highly competitive. They're a lot of times scholarship based as well. So that's the, the highest level. And those are the sport games that a lot of people will go to. So the most popular ones that what people will attend events for are men's basketball and women's soccer. Um, so a really great um, option there to go to games, if, especially if you're not playing. Then club sports is right below division one. So club sports is for people who are not gonna play division one sports, but who seriously played a sport in high school and wanna continue playing in that same competitive environment. So um, typically, you know what you're doing. You've played that sport for a while. Um, you're gonna play in tournaments against other schools. Um, and it's a little bit less competitive than division one, but still definitely up there and much more so than intramural. So intramural is our lowest level of sports at Santa Clara. The length of a season is only a quarter long. You don't have to have any experience to play and you only play one game a week with no practices if you don't want to have any. So it's just a great way to, you know, have some fun with your friends, stay active um, and tons of people are involved in intramural. So we'll get into a little bit as the slides go on. So there are 17 different club sports on campus. Um, there's a wide array of them. They range from anything from rugby, um, lacrosse, field hockey, volleyball, soccer, track and cross, cross country. Um, sort of a lot of the sports that we don't offer at a division one level, we'll offer at a club sport level. Um, and these sports are, you know, it's a pay to play situation and that covers, 
you know, your coach, your equipment, your travel costs, because you will be going to other schools to play um, in your whatever in your respective sport. And I've gone to some club sport events. Um, we have an ambassador who's on the rugby team and a couple of my friends and I went and I did not understand what was going on the entire time, but it was super fun to watch him and cheer him on and see a sport that I'd never um, experienced before. So really great way to get involved. Um, tons of people make a lot of great connections and friends through club sports. And it's a great way to continue that same competitive environment that you were used to in high school, but without the same time commitment as a division one sport. And then for intramurals, we offer 13 different intramurals and there'll be different sports every quarter. So softball, basketball, flag football um, are the big ones. Um, and like I mentioned, they only have one game a week and there's only, you know, there's no practices if you don't want to have any and all skill levels are welcome. So it really is a great way to, you know, get active um, and do something fun with your friends. A lot of people will make, uh, you know, teams with their floor mates or people in other clubs. The ambassadors always have a team. And when I got hired as a freshman, um, they were playing basketball and I've only played basketball in middle school PE and I don't understand the rules at all, but they were still like, come on, this is fun. You could go ahead and play. And very quickly into the first quarter, I realized that I was more of a cheerleader for basketball than a player. But softball, I was right there with it. I knew exactly what I was doing. Um, but it was super fun to just run around and have a good time. And in our murals, if you win the championship, you get a t-shirt and that t-shirt is coveted on Santa Clara's campus. So, so many people get involved with this. It's a great low stakes way to stay active and have some fun with your friends. And then if you want to get involved um, for club sports, you can reach out online via email or the website, which I believe Caroline put in the chat. Um, and you can see all of the um, current club sports that we offer here on the screen. Or you can sign up at the club fair that um, we'll have hopefully in the fall when we're all back in person. And then intramurals, you just kind of form a team and then you sign up for a time and that's your time every week. Um, a lot more low key. Currently, we're not playing club sports or intramurals right now due to COVID, but we're hopeful that in the fall when we can be back in person together, we can start these up again. Perfect. Thank you, Sydney. So now we're going to talk about some off-campus activities that students like to engage in. So there's a wide array of things you can do off-campus. This only scratches the surface, but it's kind of a summary. So first, you can go out to eat at restaurants like uh, Ike's, Asadero, Bill's Cafe, and there's a lot of restaurants in Santana Row. If any of y'all have been around campus, you know Santana Row is like a very nice mall type thing um, with a lot of like outdoor activities there as well. Also your RLC activities. So when you um, get your residence hall or your dorm, you're gonna be assigned an RLC, which is the residential learning community inside that dorm. And so your community facilitators, CFs, plan on and off campus events to residents. My first year, my CF planned a trip for us to go to San Francisco. And so we got all that kind of arranged for us. And then um, it was super fun and a great way to meet people and make connections. In that same vein, there's a lot of traveling. Since we're kind of located in the center of everything, you have your cities like San Francisco, and you got your beaches like Santa Cruz, and kind of chill vibes, Palo Alto, Oakland, Half Moon Bay, et cetera. So you can kind of go anywhere and get different vibes that way. Likewise, performances. So uh, we have, like City said, musical, dance, plays, and art shows. You can get um, tickets through online and see your friends perform. And that's super great way to get uh, involved off campus. Likewise, we have sports games. So we're really competitive in things like soccer and basketball. My roommate was in water polo freshman year, super fun to watch. And then baseball as well in other sports. And then plenty of outdoor activities. So we have a really, really beautiful mission garden. If any of y'all have visited campus, I'm sure you've seen the mission and therefore seen the surrounding area. It's really beautiful, great place to do homework or just chill and tan with friends. Likewise, San Jose Rose Garden is only like 10 minutes away from campus. Another really beautiful spot to just hang out. A lot of people also love to hammock. There's hammock posts um, all around campus. And so you can hammock uh, with friends outside, play games, play music, that kind of thing. Okay, so now we're gonna get to a day in our lives. We're gonna talk about our own routines and things we like to do. So here's my schedule. Like I was saying before, I'm involved in a few things around campus. Um, I'm a TA as well, like Sydney and Caroline, for a Poly 99 research class. So I basically just help the students with their big research assignment and give them advice. So I hold office hours for that once a week. And then I only have classes uh, three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which is super, super nice. Um, and then I'm in the Student Alumni Council. That meets once a week. 
I'm a tutor for a child in Los Angeles. I'm part of a program that connects inner city kids to tutors. And so that's really easy and great. It's virtual, so it's uh, very adaptable. I'm also in the Black Student Union, which is called Igwe. So those meetings are weekly. And then I have my ambassador job. In addition to giving tours, that kind of thing, I'm also the events planning intern for the admissions office. So that takes up a good chunk of my time as well. And then here I am outside the classroom, doing some things I like to do. Um, the top left is me after my first ever tour last year. Um, it was kind of right before everything happened with COVID, so a little sad, but at least I got to give one full tour by myself. That was really fun. And then the orange picture in the middle is me at Sierra Vista with some friends. Really, really beautiful spot, also off campus. On the far right, all the red, that was um, Igwe Formal. It's a really fun way to get involved with friends and um, try new activities. And then the bottom is me jumping off the fountain. If you've been to Benson, I'm sure you've seen the fountain. It's pretty iconic. So I was just jumping there with a lot of Santa Clara pride. And then the grassy green, again, me and my friends, actually girls that I met as an orientation leader, which brings me to the bottom right. Um, all the orientation leaders, we had one of our socials and the theme was like tropical. So yeah, a lot of great memories um, that I hope to continue next year. Yeah, so this is a screenshot of my week this week. So kind of weird just because like COVID has made things different. So normally I would be doing all these things in person. And I apologize, it's a little bit more senior oriented. But um, basically, I'm a peer educator for Italian classes. And so I do that on Monday and Wednesday morning. And so this morning I went to class and just kind of helped the teacher. I kind of moderate the chat and I basically like type out all the different vocab and translate things and do all that kind of stuff and help people in breakout rooms. Um, and then I'm taking my journalism thesis class. So it's kind of like every student takes like a capstone or senior seminar and it's kind of like a wrap up to your major. Um, and so I sort of took like a journalism route in the comm major. And so I'm doing that right now. Um, and so I have that Monday, Wednesday as well. And then we actually don't meet Friday perks of being on zoom. We can kind of skip out on that. So our teacher just has us meet two out of the three days a week. Um, and then I currently have an internship um, with a nonprofit. And so every Tuesday morning, I have a meeting with them bright and early at 7am because they're on East Coast time. And so I do that. And then normally I have like a tour. Um, and then I have my public relations class later in the day. Um, and then sprinkled in throughout there will be like club meetings, um, this meeting. And then I have like, I'm taking my yearbook picture tomorrow. And then I had a job interview this morning. So kind of all different things going on. Um, and yeah, so it's kind of just like my on campus job, my club involvement, my classes. And the next page is um, just a couple like snapshots of my life. The right top corner is the Mindfulness Club. That was an event we did in, in conjunction with another club. Um, and we did yoga in the multi faith sanctuary, which is just kind of like a multi purpose room in St. Joseph's Hall, where there's like a lot of teachers' offices. And it's really awesome there. And so we kind of rented out that space and did yoga. Um, in the middle is me, my friend Anna, and we're at Panther Beach, which is like an awesome beach, um, sort of on the coast by Santa Cruz, and we love to go there. Um, on the left is all the ambassadors. That was at preview day my sophomore year, so two years ago. That was the last in-person preview day we've had in the last of my career, the one and only of my career as an ambassador. So that was a lot of fun. Um, the bottom left corner is me and my housemates. That was our last first day of school this year. Um, so we were able to live in an off-campus house, um, even though school was all online. Um, and then the middle is us in San Francisco at the Mission Dolores Park. Um, and then the right is actually me and a group of my friends um, for her birthday last year, or yeah, last year before um, COVID in the, in the fall, we did um, like a birthday party in the San Jose Rose Garden. So kind of all the, all the spots. And then my schedule changes every single quarter. So what I'm doing this quarter is very different from what I was doing last quarter, but um, the picture is a screenshot of my class schedule. So I have very few synchronous classes this quarter, which is different um, from what I've had before. And a synchronous class means that you're meeting during the class time on Zoom and you're discussing with the professor, you're doing activities there. Um, so I have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class that is completely asynchronous. Um, and then two of my Tuesday and Thursday classes, the bottom two ones are only synchronous on Thursdays. So um, I don't have a full day of class until Thursday. Um, my 8.30 is unfortunately the only one that does meet synchronously consistently. So I always have to get up early, but 
Um, I have that Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on Thursdays, I'll have all three classes synchronously. So a weird mix of, you know, finding out when I'm doing my own work versus when I'm going to class, very different from what I've had before. Um, but outside of being in class, um, I have some sorority commitments um, consistently on Mondays and then other days during the week, um, work for ambassadors. And that changes every single week, depending on when I'm giving tours, when I'm speaking on panels, doing fun events like this. Um, I have acapella rehearsals every single week. This quarter, I'm not a peer educator um, because the class that I peer educate for is not being offered. Um, but normally I'd fill that in as well. Um, additionally, I'm not involved in the theater department this quarter because I've had some other commitments come up. But um, normally I'll have rehearsals for that, whether I'm stage managing or performing or working behind the scenes in some other way. Um, and then also I'm in the middle of applying for internship opportunities and other fellowships going into my senior year um, to try to look for, you know, opportunities for once I graduate. And then these are some pictures of things that I do and people that I'm close with. Um, so the top left, those are three of my best friends on campus. That's us at a formal for a sorority and that's how we all met. Um, the middle is also from preview day my freshman year, so two years ago. Um, and that was like at 6 a.m. Um, right before we all were getting set up. So missed doing that very much. And um, the picture on the right is a show that I was in my freshman year. Those were the four girls in the cast and myself. Um, and I absolutely love being involved in the arts on campus. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and we are all looking forward to when we can get back in, in person and do it together again. Um, bottom left is my acapella group at our winter showcase. Um, so one of the last things we were able to do in person before COVID hit. In the middle with all of us in the costumes, those are all my housemates. Those are the people I'm living with this year. We've all gotten very, very close because we've been spending pretty much all of our time together. Um, and they're absolutely awesome. And then on the bottom right is another picture of girls in my sorority and my family. Um, so they're, yeah, they're the best and uh, miss being in person with everybody very much. All right, thank you so much. Now we're gonna get started with the Q&A portion of this event. So please have your questions, uh, think about them. You can put them in the chat or just ask out loud if you'd like. But I'm gonna get started with the panel asking y'all, um, how do you usually balance school and social life? So we'll start with Sydney and then Caroline. Yeah, um, this is a great question. And it's something that I think is essential to figure out when you're in college, because um, even outside of the pandemic, you're not in class for like six hours a day, like you were in high school, you have a lot more free time. And so you need to make sure that you're spending your time wisely. Um, so I found that I try to get a lot of my homework and my work done earlier in the day, um, so that I can have the afternoon or the evening to spend time with friends, go to club meetings, do whatever I'm kind of doing. Um, but I also really try to prioritize getting ahead during the week or really staying on track during the week and then having time on Friday nights and during Saturdays to uh, spend time with my friends and hang out and take a break. Um, because I think it's really important to make sure that you're also developing your social circle as well as doing well in academics. And um, because you need both in order to, I think, have a really great time at college um, and to make the most of your experience. Um, and so making, like, I always make sure that I've gotten everything done, but I'm also very aware of the fact that I need to go hang out with friends and I need to make sure that I carve out time for that. Yeah, I think I would echo everything that Sydney just said. I, I am a huge believer too. And like, when you need a break, take a break. Like your work is just going to be worse if you're like pushing yourself through it when you really just need time off. And so I think it's really important to, to really establish that balance. And a lot of times you do have to say no to fun things that your friends are inviting you to because you do have to prioritize like a test or an essay. But I think um, it's really nice to kind of balance that. And I think what's awesome too, is that like a lot of our clubs on campus are a lot of our social life as well. Um, and that's kind of unique to Santa Clara, I think. Um, so even like if I have a club meeting, it's usually with my friends and it's usually like a social thing to do. So even though that's kind of like a part of my schedule um, and something that's like less sort of like, I guess like typically social, um, that's definitely like something that breaks up my day as well. Perfect. Okay, we're getting a lot of good questions in the chat. The first one's about sports. So if you're a beginner and the intramural sport you want is not offered, can you join a club? Would there be tryouts and cuts? Uh, as far as I know, there are tryouts. Um, I do believe that they cut based on those, but Sydney or Caroline, do you know for a fact? So I think it depends on the type of team. So I think so like our rugby team, for example, is like we use this as an example, they're really well established. Um, but I know like one of our ambassadors, Connor, he didn't play rugby at all. And then he joined the rugby team and just kind of like threw himself out there and now is loving rugby. Um, so that's one thing, but also like 
some teams like our lacrosse team is really competitive and there are cuts at those tryouts, but then other teams like our men's soccer club just got started a couple of years ago. And so they're not, they're not picky. And it's kind of like a tryout just to like try out, but not to like cut you. So it really does depend on the, the type of team just because some of them are more well-established than others and the competitiveness kind of ranges. So it does kind of um, vary based on what you're interested in. Perfect. Thank you. Um, are juniors and seniors in residential learning communities? Uh, so yeah, juniors and seniors can live on campus. Each residence hall has its own residential learning community housed inside. I like to think of it as a personality for each dorm. So juniors and seniors can live on campus. It's less common, however, because a lot of upperclassmen choose to move off campus since there's so much residential housing offered around SCU's campus, but they can and that is available. A really good question for all of us. Um, why did you end up choosing Santa Clara? Start with Sydney. Great question. Um, so I always start my answer with the vain part, which is the weather. Um, coming from Chicago, I was tired of being cold until May, and I didn't like that it started snowing in October there and didn't stop snowing until June. So um, coming someplace where the average temperature doesn't really get below 55 um, and 300 days of sun a year with palm trees sounded pretty good to me. Um, but more importantly than that, um, when I took my tour on campus, I really loved the like community vibe that I got. Everybody was super friendly and was saying hi to each other to and from class. Um, every, like my tour guides and the people that I like was walking with, um, already made me feel really comfortable on campus. Um, and I hadn't even filled on my application yet. Um, and it just seemed like a, a real, a place where you could build a really strong community with a group of people who actually cared about you. Um, I loved the collaborative nature of the classroom, and I knew that I could study what I wanted to because I could have two majors and still get out in four years. So that's why I applied. But the reason I ultimately ended up choosing to come here was after I um, got into the school, I applied for a theater scholarship. And part of that application was coming to campus and doing um, sort of an interview and an audition. Um, so during that interview, I met with one of the professors in the department, and he asked me, you know, what I was considering doing once I graduated from school. Um, he went through my entire list of colleges that I was considering apply or considering accepting to and sort of like helped me pick and choose which ones would actually give me what I wanted to based on what I wanted to, you know, pursue professionally, which ones wouldn't. Um, and at the end of everything, he gave me his business card and was like, please stay in touch with me, because even if you don't come to Santa Clara, I want to help you make the most informed decision you can. And I want to help you do whatever you want to do once you leave. Like, he didn't have to do that for me. I had not put down in a pause that I wasn't for sure coming here. But the fact that he willingly went out of his way to provide me with all of these amazing resources and guidance really spoke to me about how much the professors at Santa Clara truly care about the students and the vast amount of resources they have that they want to share with you. It's just up to you to ask. And when I got to Santa Clara after it, I had accepted in the fall, he recognized me right away. He's like, oh my gosh, I remember talking to you. I'm so glad you decided to come here. He's been somebody who's been a mentor for me in the program. Um, and I definitely made the right choice um, seeing as you know I'll be graduating next year. So that's what ultimately drove it home that Santa Clara was where I was supposed to end up. Yeah, so like I mentioned at the start, I'm actually a transfer student. So my freshman year, I actually attended the University of Michigan, which like couldn't be any different than Santa Clara. Um, and I, to be like completely honest with you guys, I kind of chose it because it was the best school I got into. And I was really excited about kind of like the abundance of resources and big school and big sports and kind of all that jazz. And I'm from the Midwest. So Michigan's kind of a big thing out there. And when I got there, essentially what I realized was that um, my learning style is like a huge part of my identity. And I can't sort of focus when it's like a classroom of 450 students. And so I was really looking for kind of a smaller class size. And then also I kind of walked around campus, didn't really know any familiar faces. I got involved in a lot of things that I typically like, but just like wasn't feeling it. Um, and so when I got back from uh, Christmas break, my so I was starting my second semester of my freshman year and I called my mom and I'm like crying and I'm like this just like is not it and she's like where are you gonna go like do you have what what is your plan you can't just like get up and leave and I was like I think I need to go to Santa Clara um and so ultimately like I applied to different schools um the second time around just to, like make sure and solidify Santa Clara was it um and I was down between Santa Clara and another smaller size school but what it really came down to was uh, Sydney kind of sort of just talked about this in her response but I really found that like the Santa Clara community and the people here are really special and I know it's kind of cliche and you'll hear that a lot of other places but the students here are really well-rounded and they really care about their academics and have career aspirations but they also love to live life alongside school and they're 
uh, interested in all different extracurriculars. They like to be outside. There's tons to do in California. And so it really just felt like it was a good spot for me. Um, and I think just like the class size has been awesome. Our average class size is 23 students. And my biggest class I ever had was 44 kids here. Um, and that was my COM 1 class that all the COM majors have to take. Um, and so it's just re been really awesome to make class friends and have professor mentors and be in the sunshine also. So it's been an awesome experience. Yeah, so I'll keep mine brief as we have a lot of other questions to go to. But um, the main thing that pulled me to Santa Clara was the opportunities for personal and professional growth that I felt like existed here personally being able to do things like this, be an ambassador, have a leadership position, and then professionally um, living in the Silicon Valley and having those networking opportunities, as well as on-campus jobs that helped me grow a lot as an individual. So I could see myself doing that here, especially with the small to medium-sized school. I felt like it was feasible for me to grow as an individual. All right, um, do professors curve exams at SCU? Is there any grade deflation like at some competitive universities? It depends on the professor and it depends on the class. Um, I'm in two majors where tests are not our focus. Um, we do a lot more writing and performing. Uh, so that doesn't really apply to me. Um, but I live with a girl who's a neuroscience major and her test will sometimes be curved. Um, but it also just like, it's very unique to the professor that she's in. Um, I think generally, and Caroline and Sydney can speak more to this as well um, or add on, but so generally Santa Clara is a very collaborative environment in terms of academics. Um, we're all there to help each other, even if maybe like a professor is curving or is like only a certain amount of kids can get a certain grade or whatever, like everybody will still study together, we'll share our resources, we'll work together so that everybody can succeed to the best of their ability. Um, and I think that's true for every single major here. Um, so the business school is, I know the only one that like has kind of a weird, um, way that they do grading where sometimes only a certain amount of kids can get, or certain kids, excuse me, a certain amount of students can, um, get a certain grade or whatever, and they'll do a lot more curving. But even in the business school, everybody's still super collaborative and willing to work together. Um, Caroline and Sydney, I don't know if you had anything to add to that. Yeah, I, I live and am friends with mostly business students, specifically accountants as well. And curving is a big part of that. We were actually talking about that today and they were like getting kind of heated about the curve was going to mess them up. But I think, yeah, like Cindy was saying, like it is what it is. And like at the end of the day, like, I don't know, I feel like the, it, it all kind of balances out is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I definitely second that. And it's not a competitive school at all. Oof, at all so it makes it really easy to like collaborate with students you're not competing competing for an a or anything like that this question is for sydney m can i play in the pit band for musicals if i'm not in the theater program yeah so the great thing about all of the arts at santa clara is that you do not have to be a major or a minor in order to get involved in anything that we offer um so when i was in the musical in the picture that i showed there were nine people in the cast only three of us were theater majors, and we also all had an additional major with that theater major. Everybody else is from all different areas of campus. So there were a couple engineers, someone in the business school, an English major, um, a biology major. And it was just people who loved theater and auditioned and got in. Um, and that's how all of our ensembles work. So the pit depends on what the show is and what the music director decides to do. Sometimes they have students who will play in the pit, and sometimes they choose to do it all professionally. Um, so with people who are already working in the, the field. But if um, they are going to use students for the pit, you can absolutely audition for that and play in it, um, regardless of what your major is. Awesome, thank you. Um, how many clubs should you prioritize without it being overwhelming? Caroline, what do you think? Yeah, I think it really depends on your schedule and what like you personally can handle. Um, as a communication major, the comm major is a little less rigorous and it's one of the ones that you can kind of, if you put the pedal to the metal, you could finish in three years. And so um, I picked up a minor alongside that, but I also do have more free time than my friends that are engineers or in the business school. Um, and so I have found that like two clubs that I'm heavily involved in is like a good amount for me um, just because I'm on the executive board of the two clubs that I'm in. And so that is time consuming. And there have been times where I like have to prioritize one over the other. Um, and there have been times where I was in like three or four clubs, but I was like spreading myself a little thin, um, just especially because I've 
I became a student ambassador. Um, and then I do have like an internship outside of school. So it really depends on what your schedule is. And honestly, when I came here to Santa Clara and I went to the involvement fair in the fall, I signed my name on like so many different email lists just because I was like slightly interested. And then you can always unsubscribe. You can always let people know, you know, I'm really swamped with school. Like, I don't think I can participate this quarter, but next quarter, like I'm totally down. So it's really easy to kind of go in and out of clubs. Like if you feel overwhelmed, you can press pause and people are really open to letting you do that. It's not like a you have to be at every club type thing yeah anything to add to me no that was perfect i'm probably not the right person to ask because i always like do too many things um because i just have so many interests so caroline had the perfect answer <laughs> perfect these next two questions kind of go together how did you all decide which rlc to live in did you get your first choice of housing as an incoming freshman um, I decided which residence hall to live in based on the style of living. So there's three different styles of living, the standard double, which is stereotypical college rah-rah experience. And then the suite, which is um, like an apartment style. So like a living room and then bedrooms. And then the mini suite, which is two bedrooms connected by a shared Jack and Jill style bathroom. So I'm a very social person and I knew I wanted my freshman year to be very social and the standard double yields that kind of experience because it forced you to get out of your room um, meet new people people you leave their doors open all the time so i knew i wanted that stereotypical college experience and then the place i live is called dunn residence hall and i felt like that was the nicest of the standard double dorms um so i felt like the vibe really matched my personality and that i could kind of have the good balance of social, but also being able to study and kind of get my work done. And yes, I did get my first choice. Um, I think like 80% of students get one of their top three choices. So odds are you will get uh, one of your top choices. Sydney, what about you? Yeah, so I did a very similar thing. Um, I chose, um, whenever people ask me about housing, I especially, or specifically for Santa Clara, I say pick the style you want and then look at the theme for every residence hall and see what speaks to you. Um, I knew I wanted standard double because I was coming from Chicago with nobody from my high school and I didn't know anybody at Santa Clara. And so I was like, if I'm gonna meet people, it's gonna be through clubs and it's gonna be in my residence hall. So I knew I wanted the open door culture that standard double provided. Um, and then I went to an admitted students event that they were doing in Chicago. And I was talking with one of the student ambassadors afterwards and she like got to know me and we were talking and she was like, okay, let me write down all of the residence halls and let me rank them for you based on what I think you'd be interested in. And so I put that down. Um, so I really trusted her. Um, I wanted done as my first choice. I got my second choice, which was Swig. Um, and it was totally like great experience. Um, didn't have a good roommate, but like the rest of it was great. Um, so it, uh, I didn't get my first choice, but I did get my second. And it is true that you'll probably be placed in one of your top three. Yeah, definitely. Roommate, also, I should mention, thank you for bringing that up, Sydney. Um, you can either go random or pick someone ahead of time. Um, if you go random, you're going to fill out this like match.com style questionnaire that asks about your habits, like bad dorm experiences. Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed my dorm experience, honestly. Um, I loved the structure itself. I loved the community, my friends. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed my, my dorm. Um, anyway, so you can either fill out that roommate questionnaire or you can go with someone you already know and then kind of um, you both put your names down and go from there. So do you have anything And I will add? say mo like most of the time it is a great experience yeah. like Sydney had and even if you, you were your roommate and I or your roommate and you are not best friends you can still live together really well. I had a really like kind of bizarre situation where on paper we were I went random on paper we looked great and then in person she was very very different so you know it's most of the time it does not work out like what I had. So don't let that scare you away. Like normally it's totally fine. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was like a bad experience, but like my housing was definitely like not the highlight of my Santa Clara experience because as a transfer student, you don't get the power to like pick just because it's like wherever there's space, they put the transfer students. And so one of like the less popular styles is the suite style, just because you have to have like eight people and then it's a common area and the two bathrooms to share amongst those like four doubles. Um, so it's a little less common just because it's like a little bit more like in your little pod that's like an apartment um, and people gravitate more towards the standard double. Um, and so I wound up in there 
And um, the best thing that came out of it was my roommate, just because my direct roommate, she was also um, a transfer student. She's now a student ambassador, one of my best friends to this day. Um, And so that was awesome. But like, we literally did not talk to the rest of the people that lived in the suite. Like it was awkward. Um, And it's not because like, we weren't like friendly it was just like we had nothing in common and like it was just very interesting and like we didn't really see anyone in the hallways that often and so it was just like a different experience than I had imagined and I I would imagine also that the sweet style like not to bash it I think it would be great like if you did have that group of eight people and then you just kind of like created your own little like world but I do think that like that's something to take into account too is that like you will be a little bit like blocked off in that type of setting um, but it was also really nice because it was so quiet all the time so like I never had trouble sleeping and we were like, we felt like we were the loud ones when we played music. So it was just kind of funny. I think that for me, a residence hall was kind of a place to sleep. So that just, you know, I just want to share that for the spectrum of responses. Yeah. Someone wants to know if the other two were friends, Caroline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we kind of had like, it was like me and Margaret were friends. And then some of the other girls, like everybody respectively within their roommates were kind of friends, but then like as a whole, we were kind of like, I don't know it was weird I feel like kind of bad about that like I feel like now that I'm a little bit more mature like we probably should have like bonded a little better but like we were all kind of just like chilling with the fact that like we didn't have to talk to each other (laughs) so I don't know it was interesting looking back it's kind of immature but whatever that's college yeah I definitely think age has something to do with it oh do you have a question oh no I just wanted to say like my brother went to SCU and he said that like if anything gets destroyed in like the common area, like you have to split it. Like everyone has to pay in. So like yeah. that. So like- that actually was a point a point of contention because literally they charge you. I'm not kidding, Samantha. They charge us for an empty plastic water bottle that was left in the bathroom. Like they charge us like twenty bucks for that. And so really? like yeah, I don't know this. It, I don't know I have a bone to yeah. pick with Santa Clara housing but they yeah, it's very interesting so like anything that happens across the street so that's like something to take into account too is like the people that you live with like you're probably responsible for things that go down in your room and like around you so like yeah choose wisely <laughs> yeah. brother said it like it was someone's birthday and then somebody like pissed in the fridge because they were like drunk and then they all had to pay for the fridge <laughs> oh my gosh wow <laughs> wild wild times um do you get to pick a new roommate every year yeah so it depends like what style would you go with um if you want to do like a sweet style you'll get maybe several different roommates I had two different roommates my freshman year and then my sophomore year two different people and I did get to pick um, my second one so yeah you can decide who you want to live with going forward people usually hang out in the dorms we'll start with Sydney and Caroline yeah, I think it it's a good, it obviously, okay, it depends on what style you're living in. Um, so I can see for the standard double experience. Um, and we would hang out in our dorms quite a bit, um, especially with standard double, there's a big open door culture. So when you are in your room, um, you would have the door open and people would just be wandering down the halls. You have to go out of your, your room to go to the bathroom or kind of do anything besides like sleep um, or like brush your teeth because every room has a sink in it. And um, so we would have the door open and people will come in and hang out and we do homework in the dorm, but I lived in the noisiest dorm on campus. So if I needed to really study, I needed to go to the library or go to my friend's room someplace in a quieter dorm or things like that. Um, but yeah, people would be hanging out there, especially like in between class times um, or if we weren't, you know, at a club meeting or at an event that we were working at, um, we would be hanging out in the dorm. So I think it was a good balance between, you know, you're doing your own thing with what you're involved with, but then you come back to the dorm and there's people all around and you you can hang out there. Yeah, for me, me and my friends love to post up in Benson, which is the um, dining hall slash like student union because like our dorm wasn't like the hangout section. So we would like be in Benson, just like see who we would run into and like kind of just like see where the action was. Um, and so that was some of my best memories there so we would just like eat or hang out there and there's like a cafe there that's kind of like a starbucks so you'd sit there a lot of people watching and then there's a lot of um like chairs outside by that fountain that uh sydney freeman showed in her um slideshow um so that's an awesome spot as well like the less like academic hangout spot because i spend a lot of time in the library and i do hang out with people in there but benson would be like where you're just like i'm bored let's just go like get a smoothie and chat so yeah perfect 
Um, the Santa Clara have a program for first year students where they can get on campus before the school year begins to move in early and get more familiar with the campus. So there, I know that if you're in the honors program, um, you can move in early. And if you are also a first generation college student and are a part of the LEAD Scholars program, you also get to move in early. Um, but there is no like specific, like only for moving in and like finding out or like walking around campus program that we offer for first year students. It's in like, you get to move in early as a benefit of another organization that you're already a part of. Yeah, okay. I think first years do move in uh, a few days earlier than the actual quarter starts, but that's like everyone. And then your orientation leaders take you on a short tour of campus, which is like optional. And so if you would like to do that to kind of get your bearings, you can. But like Sydney said, yeah, there's no like formal program. Um, would you say there's a lot of diversity in terms of background at SCU? That's a really good question. Um, in terms of background, there, I think there is a lot of diversity depending on how you want to slice it. So like uh, religious diversity or socioeconomic status diversity or even geographical diversity like people come from, I would say yes. Um, as in there's a lot of different flavors and cultures available on campus. And that's kind of reflected in different like affinity groups we have. In terms of racial diversity, I don't think there is as much as something SCU is trying to work on really actively is getting more students of color interested in campus. Um, and they host a lot of events. Like I was a part of one for um, black high school students to show them what Santa Clara is about and that kind of thing. So yeah, it depends on how you think about diversity, but I think it comes in a lot of different shapes and forms. And so there is some present on campus and some they need to work on a bit more. Um, this is a really good question. What is something you wish you knew before choosing a college? We'll go Sydney to Caroline than me. Good question. Um, something that I did not consider um, while I was applying to schools, but something that has dramatically shaped my experience is the size of school and especially the size of classrooms. Um, so when I was applying to colleges, I narrowed it down based on the fact that I wanted to go to either the East or the West Coast. And I needed something that could provide me some sort of area in theater and education because I wanted to do theater education and elementary education. So those are my parameters, but I didn't care about the size because my elementary school class had a graduating fifth grade class of 11 students. And then in high school, my graduating class was 900. So I'd had the extremes and I was like, I can thrive in both, who cares? Turns out I probably couldn't um, because I realized very quickly at Santa Clara that I was so glad that I had a smaller class where I could really get to know the professor, I could get to know my classmates and where there was a lot more opportunities to have discussions in class versus like going to a discussion section outside of class because the class is too big. And had I been at the larger school that I was considering um, versus Santa Clara, so I was between Santa Clara and NYU at like two vastly different schools, had I chosen NYU, I would not have done as well because that was just too overwhelming for me as an 18 year old, but I didn't know it at the time. Um, so really like sitting with yourself and figuring out, okay, will I be okay in a, like a lecture hall of 300 students? Will I thrive academically there? Or am I better off being in a smaller class where I can discuss with my peers, where I can get to know the professor on a more personal level? And for me, it was the latter and that's what I needed. And luckily I chose a school that provided that for me, but it was something I didn't consider at all and something that very much shaped my experience in college. Yeah, I think for me, and this may not apply to everybody, I think everybody sort of wants a different thing out of their college experience. But for me, what I learned and what I wish I knew is that what looks best on paper is not always the actual best option. Um, just kind of like I said before, why I chose Santa Clara. And I think that I didn't really take into account like where I personally would thrive. I was sort of like, oh, like, this is where I'm going to get like the best education and like the best job post-grad. And it's going to be cool to tell people I went here and that type of thing. Um, and like, that's great. Um, and, and I just think that like to prioritize where you can see yourself growing and developing and really thriving as a person, because a lot of your college years are really formative and what you learn and the people that you surround yourself with and the things you get involved with are super like developmental. And I think that um, being in a place where you can really like reach your full potential is definitely something that I didn't really think about um, and actually is like the biggest thing that's happened to me in college. And so I think that's something that I wish 
that I kind of knew to sort of look out for and and put at the top of my list. Nice. Okay. Uh, something I wish I knew before choosing a college. Um, I guess just how much you're going to grow in every facet of your life. I think everyone expects that you're going to grow a lot in terms of like education, but just in terms of the friends you're going to meet, the challenges you're going to face, like the homesickness, culture shock, all those things are going to really change who you are as a person, hopefully for the better. And so I think I didn't realize how transformative college would be in every aspect of my personality. Uh, so thankfully, I got lucky in terms of college that facilitated that in a positive way, but definitely something to think about before you make your decision. What are your favorite CNI and RTC classes? We'll start with Sydney. I, yeah, okay. Um, I, so for my CNI one and two, um, somebody recommended that I take an art history class, which was like super interesting. And now like I can go to a museum and look at a painting and like know what I'm looking at. But I think there are cooler options than that. Um, that for my CNI three, I took an intro to listening global class where we talked about global music um, and like cultural appropriation and how the West has sort of culturally appropriated some other cultures and their music and like just the global influence in music. And that was super fascinating. So I would highly recommend that intro to listening global um, for CNI three. And then for religion classes, um, I've only taken two but I took Ways of Understanding Religion with Dr. Tameo Morago, who is one of the best professors on Santa Clara's campus. I absolutely adore her. Um, and I took it in the spring of last year. So right when the pandemic hit and that class is normally fantastic with her, but she reframed the class to um, focus a little bit more on COVID. And um, it was before, you know, we were all bogged down with it. So it was still something that was interesting. And we looked at how different religious groups have responded to the pandemic and why they've responded the ways that they have based on their sacred stories and their beliefs. And it was super fascinating. So would highly recommend her, Dr. Tamayo Moraga. She's absolutely fantastic, the sweetest woman. Um, and I learned a ton in her class as well. Yeah, I didn't take CNI at Santa Clara um, just because courses I took at Michigan kind of counted for that here. Um, but I did take all three of my religious studies courses. The first one I took was Christian tradition, which was like <laughs> the most like basic I could have ever done. I think I just kind of like didn't really know what to do. And so I just picked that. And um, it's kind of just like a lower division class that most people take. And so we did like kind of look at the Bible and it's actually interesting because I've gone to Catholic school my whole life and I've done all of that already. But then like the way that it was taught at Santa Clara, I feel like kind of came at it at a new angle. And I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I never thought about that that way. Um, and then my religious studies too was amazing because I took it in Rome, Italy, and we got to go to ancient churches um, and talk about all the history and just like be around beautiful art. So that was biasly amazing I love that one um and then religion three I took um over like right when we got sent home from COVID so it was virtual it was called um the Bible and Netflix and so it talked about how kind of Christian um tradition and like stories have been like welded into modern day TV and film and so that was actually really interesting and we sort of like unpacked different movies um and TV shows um throughout the quarter that were influenced by religion so that was really interesting Awesome. Well, thank you all so, so much for joining us today and giving us your time. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out via Bronco Exchange. We'd love to keep the conversation going. But if not, um, enjoy your evening.